it is Caitlin and today we're going to kick off our Living History demo videos by making a family dinner in January of 1862. So a friend and I are actually working in a kitchen today so I don't have access to the kitchen itself not to mention the stove is broken. So I'm cooking this meal on an outdoor fire pit. Not everything is 1862 in the video. We are working in a kitchen that's A not mine B out of commission and C no one's actually worked in this kitchen for 10 to 15 years so there are some things that are not correct look at that enamel pot behind me that's not right for 1862 we're doing the best we can and as we get things put together we're going to have a better kitchen to cook in so I have a nice fire going it took me about an hour to get that fire going but I did get it going and there's a little grill on top of this fire pit so we can have boiling water which is what is in that pot behind me and I have the Dutch oven going as well we're going to start off with roast potatoes. Today we're going to use sweet potatoes. The receipt says, scrub some potatoes nearly the same size, wipe them dry, and roast them in a Dutch oven before the fire, keeping them often turned. Bake them in a moderate oven. Send them to the table hot and serve them with cold butter. So I'm taking two sweet potatoes. Now the receipt did say ones of the same size. I don't have any of the same size, so we're just going to do this and hope for the best. These potatoes are going to wash and scrubbed. I'm just going to set them in the middle of the Dutch oven. Put the top on. We're going to go find something to put these coals on top of this Dutch oven. This is what's going to create the oven with the heat all around by putting the coals. So I can just sit for an hour or so until the potatoes are done. It really did not take as long as I was expecting it to take. Uh, maybe about an hour or so. Now, normally, I would also have made a vegetable soup with this. However, although I only filmed this in very, very late December, it was like 85 degrees today, and I really didn't want to have to make a vegetable soup because I didn't feel like eating a soup. But I'm going to share the receipt with you anyway because normally there would have been a soup served as well had it not been so hot. So the winter vegetable soup I had planned to make, and I have brought vegetables to make, to every gallon of water allow, when cut down small, a quart of the following vegetables. Equal quantities of turnips, carrots and potatoes, three onions, two heads of celery, and a bunch of sweet herbs. Fry them brown in a quarter pound of butter, add the water with the salt and pepper, and boil it till reduced to three quarts, and serve it with fried toasted bread. Let's go ahead and check on these potatoes. I will put these on a plate and set them near the fire to keep warm and we can start on our next dish. Now that the potatoes are out, we can go ahead and start with the meat. Now I'm going to be making a hashed beef today, which is just one of the many many recipes that the Victorians had for cold beef. Uh, beef that has already been cooked that was left over. We do the whole waste not want not thing in the 19th century. So this is old beef from yesterday. I actually cooked it the day before and we're going to make a hashed beef with it. In case you're curious, the original receipt for the meat was the broiled steaks, which is nothing more than putting them in a pan with a little bit of butter, salt and pepper, and just cooking them. Hashed beef. Slice the beef and put it into a stew pan with very little onion, a little water, salt, pepper. Put some of the gravy of the beef to it. Do not let it boil. Serve with bread. So let me go ahead and slice my meat. I'm just going to put it into slices like it says. I'm not going to cut it down any further. And I need to chop a little bit of onion. This is very little. I don't know how much very little is, but Let's go with this. Now that I've sliced the beef, I'm going to put the beef, the gravy, a splash of water, and add that to our little bowl. So now we have beef, gravy, onion, a little bit of water. All in the same pot. I'm going to go put this outside on the fire. We're going to cook it in the same pot because I bring my own pot from home because none of our other pots are clean or fit for cooking in. So 
this is what we're doing. Normally, of course, I had the soup in this, and I had to find another pot to cook the meat in. We're going to put this in there, we'll put the lid on it. After it's reseated, you do not want to boil this. All you want to do is get the meat warm. The meat has already been cooked, so you do not want to overcook it. It's going to make it too tough. So while the meat is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and prep my apple pie, or apple tart, really. A receipt for a good apple tart. Lay on a border of puff paste in the dish. Pair and core the apples, dip them into water, and arrange them in the dish higher in the middle than on the sides. Strew among them sugar to taste. The grated rind and juice of a lemon will improve their flavor. Lay on a cover roll thin and ice it or not at pleasure. Send the tart to a moderately brisk oven for about half an hour. So I have here puff paste. I'm gonna put a layer of puff paste on the bottom of my pie tin and cut strips to go around. And now I'm ready to cut my apples. So apples are not in season in January, but these are apples I have put away. They're older apples from, from harvest season that I've put away in a root cellar, and we're gonna take a few of them out. I'm gonna have, I'm only gonna take three. This is a very small pie plate I probably could have used four, but we're gonna go with three today. You can see that they have bumps and bruises and such on them. They're, again, very old apples. I think they're from October, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, of course, now. So they're over two months of just sitting on the shelf. So they're going to have some sort of blemishes on them. So I'm going to cut those out as I cut up these apples. So I'm going to cut my apples into cores first. Get the, get the cores out and cut into smaller bits. Put them straight into the tin. After cutting the apples, I'm going to put in very little water into the pie pan and put sugar on top. It does not say how much, so I'm just going to give it a good layer. Now I have a little bit of a nutmeg and I'm going to just grate a little bit on top for some fresh nutmeg. The receipt says put more paste on top, so I'm going to put another layer on top. Running out of paste here, so I'm just going to kind of cover these edges the best I can. Now the receipt does say you can ice it or not at pleasure. I'm going to choose not to ice it, but you very well could. The receipt I usually use for icing for tarts is take an is to take one white of an egg and beat it till froth. Spread this with a brush or feather on top of the tart and dredge sifted white sugar on top. But I'm going to choose not to do that today. I'm just going to make the plain tart. We're going to go outside to our Dutch oven. We're going to leave this for about half an hour, or at least until the crust is very brown. So let's go ahead and prep for dinner. I have this bread I made a few days ago. I'm going to go and slice it up. And we have our nice freshly churned butter. I even use my 19th century press with it. The meat looks like it's ready, so I'm going to put my sweet potato on the plate come over and get a very nice pat of butter on these potatoes, just like the receipt said. Lid is off the meat, it's all nice and warm. Forgot to bring a serving spoon, so we're gonna just pull this out with my fork on top of the bread slice, just like the receipt did say to serve this with bread. Okay, so I left this a little longer than I intended to because I forgot we were doing this. So, we're gonna hope it hasn't burned. Oh good, it has not burned, we're good. Now it is on the um, done side, um, probably a bit more than, a, probably a little overdone, at least for my taste, I kind of like it a little bit of a lighter brown, but it's certainly not overdone by any stretch of the imagination. So, we're gonna take this inside and cut it. It's a very small tart, so I think we're gonna cut it just to the fourth, and, both, and each of us can have a fourth. And we can take another break from work, sitting at the kitchen table, and eating our tart. The tart is absolutely delicious. And there you have it. A 
and there you have it, a family meal, and there you have it, a plain family meal in January. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.